What is a seemingly normal photo that has a disturbing backstory? If you're British, and of a certain age, you'll probably be as haunted by this grainy image as I am. I still distinctly remember the first time I saw it. At the time, James Bulger was only missing, and it was regarded as a cause for optimism that he was last seen with other children. The truth was far worse than anyone imagined, and still inspires a visceral reaction unlike any other crime in my lifetime. This is a photo of Tyler Hadley holding a cup in a party at his house. Just before this party he had murdered his mother and father and hid their bodies in the master bedroom. The boy holding the free hugs sign that went viral for hugging a cop. Ultimately he was being used by his abusive adoptive mother for online social clout and eventually she murdered their whole family by driving their car off of a cliff. John Edwards Robinson. This photo. John Edwards Robinson, yellow sweater, is holding baby Tiffany, whose mother he murdered the day before. He gave baby Tiffany to his brother, saying she was adopted. His brother, along with Tiffany, didn't find out the truth for 15 years. I remember moving to a small suburb town of Raymore, Missouri just 15 minutes south of Kansas City. It was just a couple months after moving there they found John Robinson's storage unit with 55-gallon drums with the corpses inside. I would ride my bicycle by them every day. This photo creeps me out. John Lennon signed an autograph for his killer, Mark Chapman, just a few hours before the murder and then asked him is that all? Chapman even had a gun on him at the time. That story is so bananas. After Chapman came back and killed him he laid down next to his copy of Catcher in the Rye fully expecting to be absorbed into the book. After he was arrested and the cops were asking him why he killed Lennon, he basically said I don't know. Edit, a few edits to what I said. He may have not laid down by his book but he did expect to essentially become Holden Caulfield and would end up in the Catcher in the Rye. Also he said he killed Lennon for a variety of reasons. He was Christian and Lennon said the Beatles were bigger than Jesus and imagine there's no heaven, thought he was a phony, wanted to become famous by killing someone famous, wanted to save the children by eliminating a bad influence, etc. But when he was arrested and sitting in the cop car he was kind of in shock that the whole thing didn't go down as he expected and couldn't answer the question of why as everyone was freaking out and even said he was a Beatles fan afterwards. He was extremely mentally ill and constantly hallucinated tiny people that he would rule over and that he put in charge of his budget. He was also doing a bunch of acid. This photo of a scuba diver. What you're seeing is a normal photo of a scuba diver, but in the background you can see another diver behind them booking it for the ocean floor, and on the right hand side of the image, there's a flat and strangely stiff figure, Tina Watson, about 100 feet underwater, unconscious or likely already dead. Tina was visiting Australia on her honeymoon with her new husband Gabe Watson, also a diver, who convinced her to get certified despite Tina being very nervous and uncomfortable underwater. During an open ocean dive that was far too advanced for her limited experience, Tina experienced an equipment malfunction and drowned. Her husband Gabe is, at best, an arrogant, incompetent, lying piece of shit who exaggerated his abilities as a certified rescue diver and was unable to save his wife when she began exhibiting signs of distress, at worst, he's a cold-blooded murderer who deliberately shut off her air supply until she passed out and then allowed her to drown. He gave 16 differing accounts of the incident, which occurred shortly after he requested that Tina make him her sole life insurance beneficiary, on the advice of her father, Tina didn't change her policy, but she told Gabe that she had. After being charged with Tina's murder, Gabe pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to four and a half years in prison, his sentence was suspended after only 18 months. He is now back in Alabama. Whatever you believe happened beneath the surface, the photograph is chilling.
This picture was taken of a group of people whose plane crashed in the Andes. They were eventually saved but had to resort to cannibalism to survive. They are all smiling in the photo but it becomes eerie when you realize the human spine to the right of them in the picture. Edit, as many have pointed out there is a movie based on this event called Alive. It should be noted they didn't kill people to eat them. They regretfully ate meat, starting with extremities, from victims of the crash and survivors that had already perished. They were stranded in the mountains for nearly three months. Ago. The happy photo of the father and daughter taken moments before the Omakar bombing. There is a photo of an American volcanologist sitting down while studying volcanic activity at Mount St. Helens. Thirteen hours after the photograph was taken, on May 18, 1980, the volcano erupted and killed 57 people including the volcanologist. I've posted this before. A politician at an election rally. Last photo of Indian Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. Taken moments before a suicide bomber, wearing orange flowers, lower left, also on the inset, top left, hugged him bent down and touched his feet and detonated her bomb. Edit, last two frames of the film. This photo of Howard Ashman and Alan Menken, who wrote the lyrics and music respectively for The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. In this photo they had just won Oscars for The Little Mermaid. That night Ashman told Menken they needed to have a serious talk when they got back to New York, and when they got back a couple days later, Ashman told Menken he had AIDS and was going to die. They had been songwriting partners for over a decade and were in the middle of working on Beauty and the Beast. So it looks like a happy photo of two men achieving their wildest dream, but it's really a record of the last normal moment they had together. And while Menken is all smiles, if you look closely at Ashman you can tell something's wrong. Apparently this is a photo of a four-year-old girl's footprints before she drowned in a pond. This story is legit. The Larimer County Coroner's Office said Thursday that the cause of death was drowning, but hypothermia was also a significant condition. According to the coroner's report, Naomi fell into the pond around 5 p.m. and was found some time later. On Thursday, some questioned the pond's placement, which is a few yards down a sloped hill from the Loveland Sports Park playground. The pond is literally a couple steps from the playground. It is extremely difficult to watch multiple toddlers slash preschoolers at that park, as there are pillars and other obstructions in the way of the view. I moved here 31 halves years ago, and have been saying that pond is a disaster waiting to happen since the beginning. It is a stupid place for a pond, an irresponsible place, a poorly thought out place and a dangerous place. Such a tragedy, Tara Wilson wrote to the Colorado and on Facebook. Two brothers smiling, Kevin and Bart Whitaker. Hours later after arriving home from dinner, Bart killed Kevin and his mother after conspiring with a friend. He tried to kill his father as well, but he survived. It's a horrible story. I don't know what became of Bart though, all I know is that his father somehow found the courage to forgive him. This physicist, Harold Agnew, is holding the nuclear core of the Fat Man atomic bomb which was dropped on Nagasaki. This photo always gets to me somehow. Just a couple of astronauts posing in zero gravity happy to have such an incredible opportunity, like astronauts often do. Meanwhile they have no idea that their space shuttle is irreparably damaged, and in fact will be dead in a few days during re-entry, which was considered safe until then. It's the crew for Columbia for those who don't know, whose tiles were damaged during the launch of the shuttle into space by foam. No one knew how bad the damage was until it disintegrated.
Edit, some are disagreeing with my final sentence because there were some engineers concerned about the foam during launch who thought additional photographs should be taken to confirm any damage or lack thereof, which were not in fact taken. I'm still standing by my statement because while this was definitely a flaw that NASA management downplayed any potential risks, there's no evidence that anyone knew the thing was gonna burn up on re-entry or that this was a potential mode of failure, and it's more like they should have had methods in place to see this was a serious potential risk. Even if they had, there are serious questions as to whether the crew could have been saved, because real life is not a Hollywood film. NASA concluded in 2003 it wasn't possible, and even the best potential plan sounds pretty wild. A kid went missing hiking a spot on the Big Island of Hawaii. He texted some pictures of the scenery while he was hiking. After he never showed up at home, his family noticed somebody lurking in bushes in the photos he sent. Yuck, my family that live in Hawaii said the spot is illegal to hike at so it's not like it would have been a heavily populated trail. More info, and the photo in question. A still photo from a video. A man who swam to his girlfriend in their underwater hotel room while on vacation in Tanzania, and proposed to her with a note and a ring. He died before he could resurface from the water. A picture of Jeannie doing tests. Jeannie was a feral child, but not because she was raised by wolves, but because of abuse, where she was essentially tied to a chair in a room her whole childhood, and punished when she made noise. She was found, rescued, and they tried to teach her to speak, but also a lot of linguistic research is based on her case. The thing about the picture is, while her family had claimed her to be retarded she actually managed to learn to communicate a bit. By all we know now, she was curious, intelligent, and eager to learn, her brain had just literally missed the window to learn language. She's, on this picture, desperately trying to learn to communicate, but she never gained full language. Also, she sort of ended up cast aside by the researchers who used Het as a guinea pig. If alive, she's in an assisted living facility somewhere. Edit, several people commented on the cast aside and used as a guinea pig part. While some researchers, such as Curtis, seem to genuinely have cared for Jeannie, there definitely are signs that not all of them had equally noble motives. I did research this a while back, and different articles focus on different people. This article paints a somewhat different picture than the Guardian one. Psychiatrist Jay Shirley helped assess Jeannie after she was first discovered, and he noted that since situations like hers were so rare, she quickly became the center of a battle between the researchers involved in her case. Arguments over the research and the course of her treatment soon erupted. Jeannie occasionally spent the night at the home of Jean Butler, one of her teachers. After an outbreak of measles, Jeannie was quarantined at her teacher's home. Butler soon became protective and began restricting access to Jeannie. Other members of the team felt that Butler's goal was to become famous from the case, at one point claiming that Butler had called herself the next Stan Sullivan, the teacher famous for helping Helen Keller learn to communicate. Eventually, Jeannie was removed from Butler's care and went to live in the home of psychologist David Rigler, where she remained for the next four years. Despite some difficulties, she appeared to do well in the Wrigler household. She enjoyed listening to classical music on the piano and loved to draw, often finding it easier to communicate through drawing than through other methods. Nim withdrew funding in 1974, due to the lack of scientific findings. Linguist Susan Curtis had found that while Jeannie could use words, she could not produce grammar. She could not arrange these words in a meaningful way, supporting the idea of a critical period in language development. Rigler's research was disorganized and largely anecdotal. Without funds to continue the research and care for Jeannie, she was moved from the Rigler's care. At the very least, not all of their motives were so pure, and this kid was failed on several levels.
The leading image on Franklin Delano Floyd's Wikipedia page, a father and his daughter posing for a family photo. In actuality, the little girl is Floyd's stepdaughter, Suzanne Marie Savarkis, who he'd kidnapped around 1974, when Suzanne was under 10 years old. He would go on to raise her as his daughter, putting her through high school under several pseudonyms, then have a son with her in 19,881 and marry her in 1989, under the name Tonya Hughes. By 1990, Tonya slash Suzanne had decided to leave Floyd, and take her son, Michael, with her. In April of that year, she was found beaten and bruised on the side of a highway, and subsequently died in hospital. Michael went into foster care and was adopted by a loving family, only to be kidnapped by Floyd in 1994 and to never be seen again. Floyd was arrested in late 1994. The news about his late second wife being his kidnapped stepdaughter didn't come out until 2014. 1. Someone rightly pointed out that Michael is not Floyd's biological son. This was only discovered when DNA testing was performed as part of Michael's adoption in 1994, when he was four to five years old. Presumably, up until that point, Floyd had reason to believe he was the biological father, photos of his were found that depicted sexual exploitation of Suzanne slash Tonya from the age of four. I read all of these but didn't see the relatively recent murder case of the two girls from Delphi, Libby and Abby. It's an ongoing investigation but local law enforcement released a film of their killer taken from one of the girls' phones. But also a photo of Abby walking over the railway bridge shortly before they disappeared.